man, if y'all don't get from over here with that low vibrational energy, I went to feed my dog Oreo this morning and I tried to give her some generic food and she kicked it over. She said, I'm a queen. She said, she said she wanted that, that Purina. She didn't want that low vibrational energy food. She said, that's that, that's that hood dog food. She's a queen, right? <laughs> hey, but for real, that low vibrational energy. Just taking a second just to, just to look at that. Remember, I'm a teacher, not a speaker. Now, if we think of vibrational energy, right? Or anything vibrating, all the vibration is, is a particle moving back and forth. That's all it is, just a particle moving back and forth. If I'm playing a saxophone or a flute, for example, right? You're blowing air into that into that instrument, and it's those air particles moving back and forth. If I were playing on a drum, it's the drum head. If I'm if I'm playing a banjo or a guitar, and I hit those strings, right? They're vibrating. They're producing sound. We're able to see because of light. Light is produced by electrically charged vibrating particles. So when we're dealing with 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 energy and low vibrational energy, let's look at it in the full context. So let's break this thing down. Now, just know that anything that moves has energy. And I'm hoping that encourages somebody this morning because sometimes we feel like we just don't have it. But anything that moves has energy. More specifically, it has kinetic energy. If we look at our bodies and what it's made up of, all the way down to atoms, which come together to form the, the, the molecules in our body, but they are moving. They're moving. And think about that, that low vibrational energy. Sometimes we may experience something or somebody may say something that may be intended to harm us. But one thing I remember Dr. Eric Thomas often says, he said, haters go hate. You know, love thy haters. That's what it is. Love thy haters. Because sometimes they don't sugarcoat anything. They'll tell you how they really feel, where sometimes it's not bad, but out of love, our family and friends, they may sugarcoat something or say, tell us something that we want to hear. But if we truly want to grow, we have to embrace it all. And sometimes, once again, your hater could be your best friend. So once again, love thy hater. But if we look at that low vibrational energy, right? Something that may have meant to be used in an almost like in a derogatory way. If we were to really break that thing down, think about it. Think about your heartbeat. Think about your, your, your breathing rates. Think about that circadian rhythm, you know, dealing with your sleep and weight pattern within, within that 24 hour period. And check this out, your thoughts and behavior affect the rhythm of your body. And just think about that. When are you able to better process and think when you do what? When you focus and just know that when we start to have that anxiety, what does that anxiety do? It releases stress. What does that stress do? It speeds up our heart rate. We tend to lose focus. Think about a, a sniper, you know, in the armed forces. When they try to actually bring that vibrational energy down, because what are they trying to do? They're literally, you know, locking in on their target. They all the way down to the point where, where they're controlling their breathing because they're trying to be so focused that they know like when to pull the trigger, you know, whether they're gonna do it on the exhale or on the inhale, you know, it's like clockwork. It truly is a science. Think about the Navy SEALs, for example, which are, and they're known to be able to hold their breath underwater, not for seconds, but for minutes. Why? Because they know how to really control their thoughts which affects their metabolism, it affects them physically, their thoughts, and they bring that energy down to the point where the ho their heart rate starts to lower and they're able to be underwater for longer periods of time. That's dealing with the mind. That's why people tend to be um, have high, high rates of success when they wanna accomplish something, when we get that rest, when we, um, have that quiet time in the morning or at the end of the day. Some people um, meditate. Some people, um, they do yoga, you know, because your thoughts can change the vibrations in your body. 
Think of this, vibrations are even, it's, it's even affected by temperature. Temperature affects the, um, the vibrational rate almost. There's a, there's a connection, I would say, because as, as, as particles move faster and faster, the temperature increases. But as those particles start to slow down, thinking back to that kinetic energy, then at, that object is cooling down or temperature starts to go down. So sometimes, in order for us to, to achieve our goals or reach our intentions, you know, we need to be able to channel that low vibrational energy. You know, and when we slow down that breathing, it makes us more comfortable. We're able to relax more. We're able to control ourselves emotionally. Everybody calm down. And that affects our, our, our well-being. And believe it or not, there's very little scientific evidence that supports that, that correlation between the high energy, the high vibrational energy with, with happiness, with, with, um, with acceptance and so forth. But I will say this, there's plenty of scientific evidence that links positive emotions and, and being able to develop our thinking pattern to being better and greater at achieving our goals. And that's something that's achieved um, or can be accomplished with that lower vibrational energies. Remember, I'm a teacher, not a speaker. And I want us to take the time to listen to even what critics may say to us and really use that to construct something. Y'all have an amazing day.